Hi, I'm Hillary Wynn, Custom Content Manager for Meister Media Worldwide, the publisher of Crop Life Magazine. I'd like to welcome Tucker Garrigan, Director of Sales and Partner Development at Enlightened Soil Corp. Tucker is going to answer some questions about Enlightened Soil Corp and how using living green algae can improve soil health and increase crop production. But first, a little bit about Tucker. He is part of the founding team at Enlightened Soil Corp. His focus is on developing sales strategies and building a network of partners to help study and learn how in soil algae supports a diverse range of farming and ranching operations. Tucker, welcome. Hillary, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Can you tell us about the mission of Enlightened Soil Corp? Yeah, so so what we're after, and this is really a collective mission. Uh, we've met a lot of really uh, impressive people doing really cool work and pulling this rope in the same direction. So. You know, our contribution to the collective mission is is this live cell algae technology. And what we're what we're after is is educating land stewards of all kinds, you know, with a heavy focus on ag, but also municipal land stewards and even all the way down to the homeowner, that there are opportunities to harness the power of the life in our soil to drive production and create outcomes that are better all the way around. So thinking about this and the context of agriculture, better economic out outcomes on the farm are directly tied to the health of the soil. And with the live cell green algae and the ability to deliver it live, what we're uncovering is that soil health and economic outcomes are tied together in a direct correlation. They don't conflict. And so our, our mission is really to help the world reduce its dependency on synthetic chemical inputs for production by leveraging the power of the biology that's already in the soil. We want to build that life in the soil and protect it. And then everybody, everybody will realize better outcomes. So talking about soil health, which is so important, how does your product in soil algae work and what are the benefits to growers? Yeah, so this is really quite fascinating. If you think about in, in nature, you know, chlorella vulgaris is a species of Freshwater microalgae. It's a it's a green. It's a chlorophyte. It's a, it's a living green algae. The, the the Latin translation is literally common green. It's found in every body of freshwater in the world, right? And so if you think about places where this has actually been studied for a long, long time, I'm talking about a couple thousand years in in Chinese rice production in the Nile River Delta. When when floodwaters recede, chlorella vulgaris is deposited on soil in concentration. And and when it's when it's there, it releases these signal signaling molecules, these phytohormones, that are basically telling all of the microorganisms that there's there's a fuel source here, and the conditions are right to get active, and that's that's sort of the catalyst for the biological response that happens that drives fertility in in those in those environments. And so, what we've done is develop a process for growing the algae that enables it to stay alive in the dark. And what we can do now is bottle this and ship it from our facilities in South Carolina and Florida to, to anyone to create that biological response in their field. Um, and, it's, and it's remarkably consistent. You know, we use, we, I like to reference that term, chlorella vulgaris, the, the, the name common green, because our hypothesis based on the research we did before we got into this project was that this is going to work with the, the native biology everywhere in the world, right? And that's what we found to be true. So the first thing that's happening is when you apply in soil algae to your soil and to your plants is it's waking up and stimulating a tremendous amount of microbial activity. In fact, it may be as profound as any stimulation you can find anywhere. Right. Um, and so that that biological activity, when you're waking up and you're growing the biodiversity of the bacterial species, the fungal species, the protozoa, archaea, nematodes, all of it, when it gets active, the natural plant processes for fertility and nutrient cycling are, 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 are more efficient. It's also how we create you know, structure in our soils as aggregates get built and there's porosity, places for water and air to move. And so. We can pretty rapidly improve soil health conditions with the application of the end soil. Um, however, the end soil, you're, you're feeding and growing a, a biological a microbial community that's going to need more carbon, right? And so 
roots in the ground feeding carbon to these microbes is essential. One of the ways that the insole also contributes to that is it is, is shown to enhance chlorophyll in the plants. So we can have an impact on the microbial community. We can have an impact on the photosynthetic capacity of the plants to put more carbon in the soil to feed that population we've woken up. Um, and then the, the, the last thing that we really, we really consistently measure and we can, we can stand behind is the stressed adaptation benefits. So the algae is delivering phytohormones. Uh, those have an influence on, on the abiotic stress adaptation of plants. So drought and salinity are the big ones, but where we've got producers, you know, applying algae and cutting their hay, the, the applications after they cut show significant increases in production versus the untreated areas. In a ballpark, that's how it works. What is Enlightened Soil Corp looking for in its distribution partners? The first couple of boxes to check are really people that are aligned uh, in, in, in terms of the mission, right? Th those of us, there's a lot of folks out there working really hard to find ways to, to help farmers, number one, have a better economic outcome, right? I think we're all pretty well versed in the challenges of agriculture as it exists today rising input costs shrinking prices um just all, all pressures from really all sides and so how do we create a better ec economic outcome we want to find distributors that are focused on doing that and and, in, and quite frankly in a lot of times that means finding better tools that are more efficient for farmers but if we can build relationships with farmers and ranchers by helping them create a better economic outcome and have that outcome also be perfectly aligned and correlated with them building long-term soil health that, uh, I mean, that translates to, to their legacy and the, the succession plans of their farms and ranches, that, that's the people we want to find first and foremost. Uh, a, a common characteristics of the organizations that are already kind of all thinking along those lines is they're, they're well past dip, dipping their toe in the water in, in biological solutions. They recognize that there's a lot of power to be harnessed from, from building and protecting life in the soil. And yeah, that may mean using less chemical inputs or creating a different balance. But, but that mindset, I think, is, is something that we are really looking for in distribution partners. So the alignment of the mission, the mindset uh, around... You know, what's the best outcome for our farmer? Because uh, if we can do that, we're going to have relationships that we get to do business with for a long time. Absolutely. Is there anything else our audience should know? Um, I would warn everybody that if you start studying algae, you're not going to stop. It's just a fascinating organism. It's understudied. It's underappreciated in, uh, in the soil food web. But uh, that's changing as, as we, we travel the, uh, the country far and wide. So just a fair warning if you start reading about algae. You probably won't stop and you'll start listening to algae podcasts and do all this stuff. You know, might want to dress up like algae for the Halloween. Um, but, I, you know, I think the main thing that I want to get across. So we, we came at this project. There's really a human health, um, a human health objective at the core of this. Dr. George Taylor, who, who really founded this thing um, and, and funded the early research and you know, his passion, well, well he, was a, he was a practicing cardiologist and then a professor of cardiology. And, and the, the connection between soil health and the nutrient density of whatever is grown in that soil and its impact on whether it's a, a, an animal that consumes that, that fruit or vegetable or, 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 or forage or a human being, they're inextricably linked, right? The nutrient density of our food has a direct influence on the inflammation in our bodies. This is this is something Dr. Taylor was well aware of, and it really led to a lot, you know, a lot of the research um, in, in the early days. And so what we're seeing is consistent reaction from soil and plant, regardless of climate, regardless of soil type, right? The, the hypothesis that this algae would work like it consistently the way it does in South Carolina, just like it does in, in Montana, that, that is, that is thankfully proven to be correct. We've, we've been proven correct there. And most often those, those biological responses in plant and soil correlate pretty closely with yield and profitability in the farm. They also almost always 
correlate directly with nutrient density. And so the animals that are eating feed and forage that are grown with algae in Montana are healthier animals than they were before. And that's really documentable and provable and is very, very cool. You know, the citrus we're growing in Georgia shows significant improvements in, in nutrient density. And so we can help with better outcomes, better financial outcomes, which is the goal right now. But we know the next outcome, it's a domino that falls. The more farms we can help economically, the more nutrients we're actually putting into the marketplace. And so there's a really cool long-term human health outcome, animal health outcome for this. Water quality is directly influenced. You know, the healthier our soils get and the less inputs we have to use. It's all, it's all really cool. It's all really tied together, totally connected. So speaking of all of that, where can more information about InSoil Algae and Enlightened Soil Corp be found? So we, we try to keep as much information available on our website, which is insoilalgae.com. Um, both we have, a, we have you know, drop downs where you, uh, any, anybody interested could look at specific use cases and ROI. Uh, we have a knowledge base. We have a YouTube channel. Um, we are putting out webinars, you know, both content we produce with the network of, of farmers, ranchers, soil scientists, crop advisors, and, and generally cool people that we meet, um, as well as pretty consistently getting invited to be on other people's podcasts and webinars because, you know, algae's hip and it's, uh, <laughs> it's something new. We can dive into it. Well, it's billions of years old. Like this species has literally been around since the, be the beginning of all plant life on Earth. But we're talking about it in a new way, which is fun. Which is fun. <laughs> Absolutely. I painted my office green because of it. <laughs> That's great. Uh, Tucker, thanks again for taking the time to discuss how this hip li living green algae can help growers enhance soil health and boost crop production. Yeah, thank you. And and we appreciate the the, the partnership and the efforts you know, it, it's it it's imperative for us to get out and 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 start to meet people with aligned missions that have a reach. You know, they have they have relationships with farmers and ranchers that trust them, and this is something really valuable that they can bring to them. and And we do think it's the right strategy for for expanding and scaling the business. And we we look forward to uh, the connections that that come from this. So thank you very much.